It's good to go first in D&D combat as a damage dealer. With that in mind, I spent maybe a little too long raking out a character build to make that happen as consistently as possible. I know others online have done the same and gotten bigger numbers at the end, but I wanted to make one that would be functional as a character, outside of just being a big initiative bonus. I also wanted it to be fairly reasonable to achieve, in that you don't have to roll multiple insane stats, you don't have to multiclass like five different times, and you don't have to get some rare item from a particular game module that you may or may not be actually playing. I also wanted it to be potentially fun to play, and to have some roleplay possibilities or potentials built in. So here is an ideal yet reasonable initiative monkey I've come up with. All final numbers do assume you've reached a full level 20 in this build. Background can be whatever you want, none of them affect initiative in any way, follow your heart, do as you desire. Race, variant, human, this gets you a feat at the start. We're going to go for the alert feat, you're going to want that in this build. Um, we're going to go with the standard array of stats, starting with a 15 in dexterity, and either the 14 or the 13 from the standard array in charisma. Uh, the variant human plus one to do two different stats is going to get you a 16 dexterity, and regardless of which number you put in charisma, it's going to be a 14 in the end. Um, note that if you pick a different race than variant human, you're going to want to use an ASI in order to get the alert feat later on, that is going to cut down one of your stats in the end. It'll be a worthwhile trade-off in terms of initiative bonus because the alert feat is a plus five to initiative flat. The ASI you lose out on would only be a plus one to one of those stats. So it would be more broadly applicable than just initiative. However, uh, it's, um, it's not going to rely on you playing a human. So if you desperately want to avoid that for whatever reason, you're not tied to this. Variant Human just happens to be the most streamlined option. Your class and subclass final total at level 20 is going to be 12 in Rogue with the Swashbuckler subclass. I start with this one. Uh, you're going to want 2 in Bard and 6 in Warlock with the Fiend Patron. The important subclass abilities for this build are going to be Rogue level 3 Swashbuckler, Rakish Audacity, which lets you add your Charisma bonus to initiative rolls. Bard level 2, Jack of all trades. Add half your proficiency bonus rounded down to all non-proficient ability rolls. This includes initiative. And the Warlock level 6 ability from Fiend, Dark One's Own Luck, which lets you add a d10 to one ability check or saving throw of your choice per short or long rest. Your ideal magic items for this build are going to be a Weapon of Warning. That is attunement, and it is uncommon and a Luckstone, also Attunement, also Uncommon. Both fairly reasonable to hope to get your hands on. The Weapon of Warning can be any weapon, which would naturally include the various weapons you would be proficient in as a rogue. Um, it, that lets you give your initiative rolls advantage at all times. The Luckstone is a plus one to all ability checks and saving throws just across the board. Initiative, again, is an ability check. So if you can't or won't get a weapon of warning and you know it and you still want that advantage, you can lose one level of rogue to either get a third level in bard, which would get you access to the spell enhance ability. It's an action to cast, concentration up to one hour, advantage on one set of ability checks. Uh, Cat's grace would be dexterity checks, which again initiative would count. Alternatively, you could dip a level into Wild Magic Sorcerer, which would get you Tides of Chaos. You could choose to give yourself advantage on one ability check or saving throw once per day, unless the ability gets recharged by the DM forcing a Wild Magic Surge when you cast a Sorcerer spell of first level or higher. Either one of these can be applied in different ways to get advantage on that ability check, like initiative, uh, but they have their limitations, either a limited number of times per day, or you'd have to set it up ahead of time. Uh, this would also remove one ASI from your build, building, uh, bringing one of your abilities down from a plus five modifier to plus four at the end. Advantage is often statistically worth more than a flat bonus that small. It's something to consider if you can't get a magic item or anything else that would grant you advantage on initiative rolls normally. As a little bonus note, if you're fortunate enough to be given either a Tome of Leadership and Influence or a Manual of Quickness of Action, then that'll up your Charisma or Dexterity bonus even past the 20 score cap. Given the rarity of these things, I didn't count them even the initial, in the initial initiative 
um, calculation, in the final calculation, that is, uh, it is very much if you're lucky and if your DM is very kind. So, the final ideal initiative with this build, and with those two items that are reasonable to hope for, would be 1d20 rolled at advantage, plus 5 from dexterity, plus 5 from charisma, plus 5 from alert, plus 3 from jack of all trades, and plus 1 from the luck stone, with an optional 1d10 from Darkworm's own luck. In other words, condensed down, that is 1d20 at advantage, plus 19 flat, plus an optional d10. That means that your minimum possible initiative, if you roll a 1 on both of those d20s, if you do not have or choose not to add your d10 from Dark One's Own Luck, is 20. Your maximum potential initiative, rolling a 20 on one of those d20 die, rolling a 10 on the d10, is 49. You are always going to beat a lair action, and it is very likely you're going to beat most if not all enemies on the board. You have to roll very poorly twice over while your foes roll high in order to end up going after most uh, creatures you're going to face. In addition to this initiative, you would have a consistent d8 hit die across the board. Not the best, but not the worst. Uh, you would, from starting in Rogue, have proficiency in light armor, simple weapons, a number of other weapons, thieves tools, dexterity and intelligence saving throws, four skills from a fairly sizable list, 66 Rogue sneak attack, cunning actions, uncanny dodge, evasion, reliable talent, expertise in four skills or three skills plus thieves tools, three swashbuckler subclass abilities, um, things that uh, make you capable of evading or canceling opportunity attacks if you make a melee attack at a creature, um, the initiative bonus more flexible sneak attack, and some charm that's not based on spell work that's useful in and out of combat. Uh, quick note on the reliable talent, it would not apply to your half proficiency skills, it only applies to full proficiency, so don't get too excited about that one, it is still good but it's not that good. It's not going to change your initiative calculation. From Bard, multi-classing into it would give you proficiency in one more skill of your choice and one musical instrument of your choice. You'd have that d6 Barding Inspiration die, five uses if you have a plus five charisma. Um, you're probably going to be using your bonus action in combat on your rogue abilities, but the Bardic Inspiration is useful outside of combat as well. You've got your Jack of All Trades, which, again, applies to more than just your initiatives, so very useful across the board. You'd have Song of Rest, better short rest healing for the entire group. You have two cantrips, five spells known, three first level spell slots, prolonged rest. And from a Warlock, you get a Pact Boon. You get Dark One's Blessing, which would be really good with burst damage. If you kill a thing, you get temporary HP equal to your Charisma modifier plus your Warlock level. You have Dark One's Own Luck. doesn't have to apply to initiative, you can apply it to other things, uh, but if you choose to reserve it for initiative due to the focus of this build, it's there. Uh, you have three more cantrips, seven spells known, two third level warlock spell slots per short rest, and three invocations. A quick note on the invocations. Available to you if you take Pact of the Blade is an invocation which allows you to attack twice instead of once on your turn. You can only apply sneak attack once on your turn, but the bane of that on a rogue is that if you miss your attack, you're, you don't get sneak attack at all. You don't get anything. This would allow you to double the chance that you might hit a creature on your turn, which is therefore double the chance that you can get that sneak attack damage off. It would be very good on a rogue. In short, all of this is pretty functional. It should perform fairly well, it's got some great roleplay potential with the performance aspects of Bard and Swashbuckler, yet the darker possible undercurrents of a little bit of that base rogue, and definitely the fiend warlock, and you also get to make the DM scream almost every time you roll initiative. What's not to love? That being said, as an honorable mention, there are some other options for a higher initiative build. Uh, Gloomstalker Ranger, particularly if you use Unearthed Arcana's Revised Ranger as a base, has a similar mechanic wherein it adds wisdom to initiative with the bonus of getting initiative advantage at level 1 and granting attack advantage on any creature that hasn't acted yet. If you take a scoop of Champion Fighter up to level 7, you'd get a half proficiency bonus rounded up, 
on strength, dexterity, and constitution checks that don't have proficiency regular. So you could end up with a fairly similar setup to the Dex Charisma build laid out earlier, just leaning in a different thematic direction, and unless you set your Charisma up on build without that Fiend Warlock D10 Cherry on top. Another side note, a School of War Magic Wizard adds their intelligence to initiative rolls at level 2. Intelligence doesn't mesh quite as well with most of the other classes that grant these bonuses and advantages. Uh, not to mention, if you just go wizard or start with wizard, you would lack the weapon or shield proficiencies for most of the items that also grant bonuses or advantages on initiative. Um, with a weird enough build, though, you could make it work. So, with all that said, is there a viable yet ridiculous build you can make out of various uh, abilities, subclasses, items, spells in D&D? using standard race stats, adhering to multi-class prerequisite rules? Probably. If you can think of one that I didn't mention here, or that uh, maybe that you've come up with or that you've played even, go ahead and mention it in the comments. And above all, have fun.